and the shower and the shower. Good morning, ladies. As I destroy my bathroom. Good morning, wherever you are. Woken up today, it's a very mixed day in London, but I thought, gotta get on with it and do what I said I was going to do two days ago, which is to give you my mask video. And I kind of have been obsessed with masks for many, many years, and I use them constantly every few days. And I have lots, I have actually about nine of my true favorites, and I'm trying to squeeze it into seven. So, um, the one I have on now, if any of you watched my little trailer uh, coming here in a black cab, um, is Biologie Recherche, and it's called Mask Vivant. And this is not the cheapest mask. After this, I'm going to start with the cheapest, the most expensive. But how can I describe the smell of this mask? It is really dodgy. The smell makes you want to take it off nearly immediately. But the result of this mask makes me keep it on. Um, and the smell, I've got used to the smell over the last uh, few months that I've used it. Uh, and I don't know what exactly is in it um, that does this thing. I don't know much about the ingredients of this mask. I know a lot more about the other ones. But all I know is it works. And it's incredibly good also to keep it in the fridge. Um, so that you get the cold as well as the regenerative properties. But it's sort of oxygen complex. Um, and I'm going to now, hang on, my, I don't want my thing to fall. I'm gonna take it off now. I mean, you didn't see me this morning and I really did look really, really tired this morning. I didn't sleep that well. Uh, so getting it off, so it's been on now, oh, about half an hour. Not good for the flannels. Ooh, good look, huh? Um, but let's just hope. Mm. It's going to give me what it gave me when I did it last time. Um, and I think, I mean, I want to put on all different masks for you today. So you can... Oh, oh okay. Even, even I want to um, go back in horror from that, that um, thing. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Emma. Good morning. Any, Victoria? Glenda says good morning from Indonesia. Oh, good morning from Indonesia. Fantastic. Um, can I just say I've got Victoria today um, on the, as the background. Lovely Victoria, who you might have met briefly on Monday. And she's going to be looking through questions as I prattle on. Um, so... God, I'm going to go through a lot of, uh, a lot of flannels. Okay. When to use a mask? I use them all different occasions. So I've kind of categorised my masks, but I'm going to do them cheapest to the most expensive. Um, I've got to say my skin after that is really soft and, and um, toned, really soft and toned, no makeup on. It, it feels very good. Might not look so good. I don't really care. Um, so, the least expensive hydrating mask. I've got a few hydrating masks. And the least expensive hydrating mask that I use that's actually effective um, is Boots Number no. 7 here. Beautiful skin mask like that. Uh, it is a mask which has got um, a little bit of uh, rose in it. It's just that kind of classic hydrating mask but when you put it on no it's very gloopy um and have i got here dry very dry skin there is one for normal skin and one for dry very dry skin i put it on like this it smells like every other boots product um i think boots and ms must literally share the same uh factory because there's this kind of generic smell of oh it's a cosmetic skincare product let me give it that fragrance it's a kind of non-fragrant, slightly chemically, nearly like a medium to cheap uh, scented candle. Um, just kind of whatever. But there's something in this number seven mask that makes your skin tingle. And it's not just because I've had another mask on before. It goes on fine. I leave it on. I usually have a shower with this mask. So it's a kind of mask I actually put on in the evening when I'm going out to something and I kind of feel I want my skin to look plumper and maybe the day has made my skin very dehydrated and tired. Uh, it's not a mask I put on much in the morning. 
Um, I don't know why, but that's how I use it. Uh, uh, good morning, good morning, Carolyn. Hello, what do I think of sheet music, Trin? Sheet masks, okay, sheet masks, let's discuss them. I think sheet masks are a bit of a fad, um, but I think some of them have very good ingredients. I think what's great about them is for traveling, um, because you just have one and, and some of them are reusable like Charlotte Tilbury's just brought out one actually I have not tried which is on her sea goddess mask or something and it has a bit behind the ear and I thought that's unbelievably clever um, so I have yet to try that one some of them I think have very thin amount of ingredients because when I put them on and pe pulled off back the shiny bit on the surface and then I take it off my face the hydrating ones I don't think do much the only good sheet mask I've really used is Creme de la Mer, criminally expensive one. But I will perhaps do something on sheet masks for you, although I think it's a bit of a, um, how do I put it? Not a rip off, but if you think a sheet mask could be sort of three to five quid each, and I'm going to say that number seven is 12 pounds 50, and how many times can I use it? Definitely 20. Uh, so my cost per application is about 50p and I don't think you can buy a sheet mask for 50p and the ingredients in here are very good. So does it penetrate more because it's a sheet mask and there's some foil in front of it and it's having to go into your skin? I don't think that helps penetration. So I'm on the fence, but I'll get back to you. Anyway, number seven, very moisturizing mask if you have dry and dehydrated skin. Okay, now... What if you've got a skin that's kind of just a bit tired and um, needs a little bit of cleaning, maybe needs a bit of resurfacing, perhaps you've been looking at products that are um, enzyme treatments and enzymes are those things that eat away at our dead skin cells and a make, Mario Badescu, there we go, uh, is from New York and this is a enzyme mask, enzyme revitalizing mask. Oh! It's very, very liquid. This is the one problem I have with this mask as it's gone on my floor. Thank God it's gone on wood. But it's really liquidy like that. Um, and so when you put it on, it's nearly too thin. But just rub it in like that. Rub, 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 rub. Trini, can you just show my number seven mask again? Oh, yes, I can. Sorry, let me do that because I'm very disorganized. Um, this one's not going to stay on for a long amount of time. There we go. It's, it does white out. Let me just try and get it in slowly so that you can read it. There we go, number seven mask. Got it, taking a screenshot, there we go. Okay, um, let me tell you about Mario Badescu. I, I did live um, some of my life in New York, and so New Yorkers are quite obsessed with their dermatologist. I mean, it's like where we might have, if we're British, we want to pretend we don't care about our skin too much and it just happened naturally. Um, it's like an American woman and an English woman with a decorator for your home, okay? So an English woman, if she had help with her um, home decoration, would just say, oh, I, somebody comes into her house and says, what a lovely, um, what a lovely sofa. And she'll go, yes, it's great. Um, and they'll go, oh, amazing fabric. Oh, somebody, I got it from somebody and put it on. And in fact, she had a whole house helped by a decorator. In America, it would be, hey, Melanie Go did my home. Isn't that cool? And so Americans have a, a great sort of, um, they love to promote somebody that they recommend who's an expert. And I know many American women who earn the same amount of money as a British woman and they have their dermatologist. And I think, it's kind of healthy and it looks after their skin. And, and anyway, Mario Badescu was an incredibly famous cosmetologist. He was like a cosmetic surgeon uh, uh, dermatologist. Um, and he kind of dealt with all the stars. He had this, I used to go there actually years ago and I can't remember, it's on the sort of first or second avenue, Upper East, Mid East side-ish. And he had this little townhouse and he used to make these products and he didn't care about the packaging. And I love a company that puts all the money inside the pot and not on the outside of the pot. And Mario Badescu is, is that man, was that man, he is now dead. Um, 
but he created some cult products. One of them was called Drying Lotion, still used today a lot. Um, and uh, it, you put it on a spot, it's sort of pink coloured, and it, it kind of gets rid of the spot. I think there's salicylic acid and camphor in it. But his mask, so I went back there and it, I found it was sold at Liberty's. And I thought, my God, is that still going? That company established 1967. And it is, and I've got to say, I love this mask and it's 16 pounds. Um, and I think it probably has the same quality ingredients as a mask that is sort of 60 pounds because I can feel the activity on my face. I can feel the tingling. I can feel the enzymes going in there. It's got papaya in it. Papaya is a really good eater of dead skin cells. Um, and it's got vitamin E oil in it, which is a, a nice uh, hydrating vitamin E oil. So it's going to kind of eat away at the dead, dead skin cells and give you moisture. Now I've got to read. Are they asking questions, Victoria? Is there any mask that helps with pigmentation? Pigmentation, well, I would say helping with pigmentation is something that needs a more long-term result. I'm gonna quickly show you something because I was going to do a pigmentation um, thing and I don't know if I've still got it because I found it the other day. You digress me, but as this mask is drying, I'm going to let myself be digressed. Oh, God damn. I'm really trying to tidy out my bathroom. Anyway, it's dark pigment relief cream from Skin SkinCeuticals. So I would put that on overnight thickly. Um, it's the same make as C. Furonic. Um, I always pronounce it incorrectly. I really apologize to the brand uh, Skin SkinCeuticals, but the dark pigment uh, relief cream, you put on areas, specific areas where you have melanoma or pigmentation um, and it does fade it really, really well, and you can use it. If I find it in the bathroom, I will help you. Um, minerals, yes, DMK enzyme mask. Miranda, yes, DMK enzyme mask. Well, I'm very interested. DMK enzyme mask, will you put it on the list, Victoria, because we want to try it too. I love it, ladies, when you all help each other and give advice. Can I just say, it's a community, and I'm loving it. Communities are so important. Um, okay, I'm going to take this off now so you can see my face again underneath. Um, I think there won't be a huge change because it's mask upon mask, but I'm just going to take you through the process. Dehydrated and acne prone skin. I've got one on my list for you. I'm getting there. Okay, all right. So, easy to take off. The Mario Badescu, I think you can get, um, try Liberties online. You can definitely get it in um, pharmacies in America. Um, so I'm sure if you put it in Mario Badesco Enzyme Vitalizing Mask, you'll find it. Okay, now, good morning, good morning, Deborah, good morning, Louise. Ignore the Daily Fail. Oh, I didn't, oh, I, I don't know. Um, is there something in the Daily Mail? Um, now, Plant Me Botanics. Plant Me Botanics is my next one. Some love from New Zealand. What? Oh, hello, New Zealand. Okay, um, now, Rose Otto um, is a wonderful, wonderful ingredient and it's an essential oil and it has amazing properties. Uh, it's been used since the Egyptian times. And um, this man, Paul Barrows, who started his life as something totally different, went on to form this company 320MHZ. And it's a kind of weird name for a company. You're either going to really remember it or forget it. But he has Rose Otto products. He has a nail um, nail treatment with a roller ball. He has a night oil and he has a day oil. But it's a very, very small range and I think he's starting to stock it somewhere. But if you go on to plantmebotanics.com, you'll get information on it. But I think it's in a really interesting range and he's so obsessed, this man, with his ingredients. So his Rose Otto masks looks like a bit of gunk. Put it on like that. There. and rub it in. It kind of rubs in very softly. Um, and the smell of the Rose Otto is one of the purest smells of Rose Otto that I have ever had. And it has in it moringa oil. And Paul is obsessed with moringa oil. It's something that he feels the moringa tree is this incredibly magical tree that has brilliant properties to help aid skins um, 
skin's, I was going to say lack of, not lack of demise, skin's downfall. Um, and also prickly pear. Now prickly pear is, you know, what Paul does is he looks for, he says, okay, I want vitamin E in it, but I want the best form of vitamin E. Um, and argan oil has a small amount of vitamin E in it, but prickly pear has 150% of the amount of vitamin E than argan oil does. So he's obsessed with um, finding that in clever, incredibly clever ingredient. He works with a laboratory in France. And then he's also got, I have to just digress, a night um, risotto night oil, and it has samphire in it, which is a natural retinoid. And he's looking a lot at how he can put retinoids into um, ingredients uh, and into products, and they're really, really natural. Very, very interesting company. So there it is, and um, and I leave this on for about 20 minutes in the bath. It feels like, when I'm rubbing it in my face, it feels like I'm sort of rubbing in butter. So it feels like it's soft. My face is green. Um, and I just kind of, some masks like this, I do think, should I be just doing a little bit of massage as I rub it in? And I probably would say yes because I can feel that if I use the heat of my fingers, I will actually get more penetration of the mask. Hello from Poland, Agnieszka. Hello, hello, Mara from Sydney. Hello, everybody, can I just say, so nice. Should I, yes, can I just, oh, Mara from Sydney, how right you are. Do take it down to your neck. And there's a, quite a few women who are asking me about necks. And I think necks, I have a very long neck. And I think next can be, you know, we need help. So do take that down, all the way down, rub it in. Our neck has a very different skin on it from our face. And what's interesting is, you know, we have different skin in different parts of our body. So uh, under our eyes, it's much thinner. We, I think, all know that. And that's why we always think, oh, an eye cream is going to be better because the molecule is smaller, because they've made it differently so that it's not so heavy under the eye. And the neck again is a different place because the skin is thicker and it's, um, it's harder to penetrate products onto the neck, which is why any of you will do a whole neck thing, but any of you who think my neck is in trouble, I would say really try microneedling and putting serums on top, like a, you know, quite strong serums, because you need to get something that will penetrate through that thick skin on your neck or that kind of sagging, loose skin on your neck, whatever it might be, um, to, to do things at work. Um, so anyway, your mum looks like she's the gold skin. Do you think it's genetic? My mum has um, Scottish skin and it's quite, um, she's got incredible bone structure, my mother, and she's never used skincare products hardly. I mean, um, we buy her things now, and but my mum has the most basic skincare routine of everyone. I don't know what I was born out of, but I was born out of the least vain woman I know. Um, can you read some of these? I suffer really badly from rosacea. What do you recommend, anything? Mm, okay. Um, I think that, to be, I have to say, this mask, if you have rosacea, has ingredients in it that would be incredibly soothing and healing. So I would be interested for you to try the mask. I wouldn't try enzyme peels, things that are gonna really exasperate your ros rosacea. I think you want things with very nurturing products in them. Um, let me take that off now. These are not all staying on for the right amount of time, but I just want you to see how they come off easily or not, because I think that will oh, help you in your decisions. And the um, plant me, mask is 32 pounds it's quite a small pot but you don't you hardly need any and i think it's incredible ingredients really fantastic okay i'll take that off any other questions so darling i use a dermal roller probably once a week yeah okay all right so sorry really taking a long time i'm gonna go very quickly now and i'm gonna put one on each part of my face so a mask I love and it's really dry, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of water. And this is the thing, if you have a clay mask and it's gone a bit dry and it's a few months old, like Glam Glow, they do dry up. If you leave it open for 20 minutes by accident on your um, tabletop of your, of your bathroom, it will dry up. So I put water in and then I, oh, 
then I mix it around again. So clay mask, I think it's fine to do that. Other masks, you might be tampering with the ingredients. So Glam Glow is a, is a mask that was invented. Um, it was just one company and all they did was this mask. And now they've got five masks, um, but they focus on masks. And I think it's interesting if a company focuses on one product because you feel they're putting all their energy into that. It's not just an afterthought, let's do a mask. So usually when I put this on, it tingles immediately, which it's doing. Um, and this mask was the first one. It's the one that was kind of that. Have a, you want to have a great night out, put this mask on. It would change your skin and go out. They now have masks for acne. They have masks for redness. They have uh, five masks. They have masks for intense hydration. But I still always go back to this mask more than any other mask. Um, so I'm going to keep that on that side of the face, but quite a few like it. Um, but it's a great product, really great product. It comes in a small pot size too for traveling. And that is um, £39. And now I'm going on to a weird thing here. This is just my anomaly. Santa Maria Novella. I have that Crema F that I like. This is a very small um, company based in Florence and I talked a little bit before about one of their products last week and they um, have a Crema F, the avocado moisturizing cream. I talked about it in my moisturizers. Now I have a mad friend called Katie Brain. She's one of my oldest friends and she um, said, Trini, have you tried this mask? So she said, it's their almond mask. So I get this product and I think, oh, fantastic, put it on. It's like sort of butter. No, it's not like butter, it's like margarine. It smells of what does it smell of? It smells of, what's that? Do you know that, um, Victoria might know this, I'm really putting her on the spot. Do you know the, the liqueur? Amaretto, amaretto! It smells exactly like you're drinking amaretto. Oh God, I haven't had that for 30 years. Um, and it's really, really soft. But you know what this is? This is a mask for the hands. It's almond paste. For the hands and when I then actually I'm gonna look at my crinkled crinkled hand I'm gonna put some on the back of my hand so um, I, I called Katie up and I said Katie this is a mask for the hand it's not for the face anyway when I took it off my face it was so soft and fantastic so it's a weird mask it's difficult to track down there is a little shop in London called Santa Maria Novella um, and they sell it there uh, it costs um, 40 pounds and I've got it on my hands now. And um, if you go onto the site in America, this is easier to find because they have the prices on the site. But they never like to show their prices. They're a weird company. They started in 1221 in Florence as a monastery. And then they started their um, pharmacy in 1600s. And it's all plant-based. It's I think some of the ingredients have not changed for 600 years. Um, but I just like that anomaly. I love that kind of, you know, there's so many things out there. And I think when you've got a small pharmacy, they bend the rules, they put in ingredients that maybe wouldn't be able to be sold easily everywhere. Um, and that's perhaps why they're quite discreet about what's on their site. Anyway, it's a little but fine. Asking, could you do a video on product placement and layering? Product placement in layering? Oh, product places in layering. Yes, okay. I will do because it's very technical. Um, and we hear so many words bandied about AHA, BHA, shit HA, um, retinols, vitamin A, retins, uh, and enzymes, fruit enzymes, different enzymes. So I will go into details with it. I'm trying to pin down Caroline here on so we can have our chat together and she was on um, with us on Monday and so I think she had a back problem so I want to know it with her because we're both equally obsessed with skin and I think she would teach me something and I would hopefully amuse her um, uh, so we'll see okay I'm going to put on my forehead not the right place for it but some ladies were asking about acne prone skin and I had always great help with um, my skin from Eve Lom and I went to see her for facials for about 10 years when she literally had only been going about uh, well she I don't know how old she is now but I went in 1990 
1990s to see Eve Long. And she always would do this special regime and it was that double cleansing, which she invented double cleansing basically. Clean your face twice, then she put on some incredible chamomile to calm it down. I was just throbbing, pulsating, spewing spots, peeps of face. And then she'd do a little bit of releasing of the pus basically picking my spot and she did it very carefully she got a needle try this at home only if you're very comfortable with it but she sterilized needles and she would just prick where I had a really juicy one ready to pop and then gently let it come out and she wouldn't press it straight away she would let the release happen she felt there was a natural release which was so microscopic and then she'd sort of take um, a cloth put it either side and press down the skin either side but not squeeze the spot so she'd press it down to release it more then she put on rescue mask and rescue mask is a mask based in camphor and camphor is an incredibly good ingredient for um, healing uh, any kind of inflammation or bacteria it comes out um, and it smells of camphor, but I just want to show you, it can come out so it's quite liquidy. I've actually mushed it together. It's not now, but it, it was very liquidy before and I had to kind of rub it up and down. Um, and you put it on, I'm gonna put some on my forehead here and it's quite thick and it will slightly dry. And I also, if I've run out of her Dyna spot or the drying lotion I sometimes use in Podesco and I have a spot, I'll just dab some of this on at night and it's in the morning, I feel that spot has really gone and, and released itself. It's very, very good for redness and irritation, this, spot, this mask. Rescue mask in name and in action. Okay, um, now which one is ready to come off my face? I feel like I've got, you know when you order a pizza and you order three different ingredients and they put them sometimes on the pizzas, I've got pepperoni, I've got margarita and I've got uh, napolitana. Um, all right, have I gone through all of them? Okay, I've got one more to do. So, um, if I'm doing a big night out, I have a regime and I'm just going to share it with you. It's not a cheap regime, but I have done this for five years and I swear by it. And it starts with an exfoliation. Actually, I'll give you the whole, the whole thing. Ow, shit. Sorry. Um, got my finger caught. I'll start with a strong exfoliation, either Dr. Lancer or Goldfarden. Really exfoliate my face. Then I'll put on Natura Bisse Glyco Peel. This is a strong glycolic peel. And for some people it might be too strong. It has five AHAs in it, alpha hydroxy acids in it. Um, and it has uh, tataric, which is uh, made from plants and bananas. Uh, it has um, citric and it has lactic, which is a, a milk-based acid. So it's strong acids and they're really gonna eat, eat, eat away. Then, I know language, you're so right, language. Excuse me. Um, any other questions? Uh, say hello from Spain. Hello. Um, and then after that, I will put on, generally, I will put on a hydrating mask. So I might put on the sizzly mask. But if I'm on a mad moment, I'll do the Dr. Lancer, then I'll do the Glyco, then I'll do the Glam Glow, and then I'll end with Sizzly's Black, Black Orchid. Now, Sisley's black, uh, black Rose Mask is not dissimilar uh, to Beautiful Skin um, Mask, Boots Number 7 Mask, but the ingredients are much stronger and there's a kind of lifting properties to it. So I would say that, you know, if you have a tired face which needs hydration, it's an unbelievable mask. And I put it on, leave it on for 20 minutes and just wipe off the excess. It's not cheap, it's actually... Um, 99 pounds. I don't use much and I love it. I swear by it. Um, so if you think, no way, that's way too much for me, try the boots number seven. But if you can bear to splurge, this is such a secret weapon in my bathroom. And it feels like it's nothing. And yet I think, I look at my skin afterwards and I think, yes, it's great. Um, okay, I think we've done them all. Is there anything? Oh, I'm going to do very quickly an organic mask, which I really, really, really love. Um, which is Andalou, and that's an enzyme mask, and I've used it before, and I've put it on um, my, uh, I've put it on my blog, so have a look uh, at it, um, and it brightens, does all the things that enzymes will do. I'm just going to take this off. Any questions, Victoria? Can I ask you what's the best mask for lines? For lines. Well, 
you know, all the things I'm saying are good because when you feel you want something for lines, what you're really wanting is something that plumps up your skin. And these will, you know, eat away at the dead skin cells. And dead skin cells, if they keep at your skin, dead skin cells create wrinkles, ladies. Let's make that clear. Because the more dehydrated and dead skin celly your skin is, the more it wrinkles. It's just a fact. So if you can keep your skin really clean, and when I say clean, I mean every dead skin cell off it, I think you're going to take longer to get wrinkles. And if you have them already, hydration, but with exfoliation. Hydration with exfoliation, not just hydration. Okay, there we go. Oh. And let's look at my hand. Let's look at my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel I have, I have been through a main masked moment. There we go, there we go. Um, my hand with my almond paste on it is actually unbelievably soft. My skin feels great. I'm going to finish off now with a little bit of, um, a little bit of CE Fioronic. Any questions, Claire, uh, Victoria? Do you cleanse before putting on the mask to do it fasting? Do you cleanse before putting on the mask? Yes, for sure. You need a clean face for a mask to work its best. So that is a given. You've got to cleanse before you put it on. Oh, I've got a new product I want to show you. Let me just see if I've got it here. Hold on. Um, I had it to show, and I, oh yes, here it is. Yeah. You remember Filorga? Filorga. I did that, um, I used them. I'm using now, actually. I'm trying this at the moment. It's um, Zellens Matrix Energy and Moisture Infusion. I saw it recommended. Um, and I just, I, Zellens I'm not sure about as a brand. I see so many beauty bloggers obsessed with Zellens and I've always tried it and thought, mmm. I'm not sure if it's just a kind of very expensive range with no, not, not great properties, but I'm still going there and I'm seeing if I like this. Okay. It's quite nice. It's a bit sticky, actually. But I've got something else I'm going to show you very quickly. I, you see, I put that on and it says intense moisture, but it's left my skin a bit sticky. And um, what energy and moisture... Infusion, it's not a mask, it's a cream, but it's, God, it's sticky, sticky, don't like that. Now I have to put something else on. God, life can be difficult. Okay, I'm gonna put on, what am I gonna put on? I'm gonna put on, what am I gonna put on? What am I gonna put on? I had a moisturizer. Tina says she loves your videos. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's just do, lovely. Good moisturiser, this, The Ordinary. I reviewed it um, in the moisturisers and I'm loving it. Simple, quick application to give skin hydration. Keep it in your handbag, run around with it. All right, my last thing I'm going to talk about, ladies, is actually a little product I found yesterday in MS, which I'm liking, and it is Filorga, and it's a BB Perfect Cream. I love a BB cream. Uh, when it's not too drying. Sometimes I think they're drying, but this is a BB as in beauty balm, but it's very, very soft to put on. It's like a beauty blur. Same bloody smell as the M&S and the Boots products. God, I wish they'd think of a new way to make products smell, because it makes you think they're all the same, which to a certain extent many of them are. But um, anyway, I like this. It's, it's not a tinted moisturiser and it's not a foundation and it's not a glow product. It sits somewhere in between, um, but it gives skin a freshness and I like that. So that's it, ladies. I'm done. I'm going to go now and get ready for my day. How long have I been up, uh, Victoria? About an hour, two hours. About what? No. How long have I been up? How long have I been filming? Filming. What? Oh my God, that's too long. Okay, so here, it, this is a nice little colour I discovered from, it's called Ilia. I just quite like it. Tiny bit on my cheeks too. 
And I'm done for the day. I'm going to go and get dressed. I feel like gabbled on today. Have a wonderful day, ladies. And um, every day is a new day. And we've got to embrace it and love it. Bye.